Now the next item is the overview of the project, actually, and it will be presented by Dr. Hushang Lahuti, our friend in Australia, our colleague and friend in Australia, Dr. Hushang Lahuti, Doctor of Science as well. Uh, he's a principal medical scientist and lecturer teaching evidence-based medicine at Nepian um, Clinical School, the University of Sydney in Australia. He studied in England and Norway. He did his PhD in molecular and cellular biology, MSc in biochemistry and biochemical endocrinology. Um, he and BSc in medical laboratory sciences. He's a specialized in clinical chemistry. His first postdoc fellowship was at Imperial Cancer Research Fund in London, UK, and a second postdoctoral uh, fellowship was for, with the Norwegian Cancer Research Society. He has authored uh, more than 50 peer reviewed research articles in and applied medical research. Primary research focused on molecular genetics of thyroid IPT, thyroid and I have, uh, he has also um, published many articles on autoimmune thyroid disorder and developed a unique laboratory tests to help manage patients with various eyes and thyroid disorder. Dr. Lahuti, please. Uh, Thank you very much, Dr. Barai. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Greeting from Australia. It's, uh, I'm very grateful to uh, Ambassador Avivi for coming and sharing his idea with us. That is very helpful, and we will use that one, hopefully, in the future. And also to my esteemed colleague, Nadir Sadiqi, for giving such an important introduction about the water shortage. Let me show you the problem of in Iran, just as by graphically showing a little bit about uh, what is the problem and what we should do about this problem. Looking at this one, this is the mighty Koron in Akwaz. Look at this one, please, the beautiful please share, Zion. Please share, the please share the screen, doctor. Oh, oh sorry, I have to. Uh, let me just, let me go back to that. Uh, Share screen is open, please just. Uh -huh. Okay, no, I got the share screen. That's one. Yeah, it's going into that, yes. And go, go to the uh, file that you have to show, please. Yes, go to the file that you need. This one? Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, yes. but there is something in the in the middle. Uh, it says, "Please move this window away from the shared application." Oh. Let me just close this one. I may have opened this one. Close it and open it, uh, uh, or as a PowerPoint. Are you seeing it now? Mm. Now, yes, now good. Good. Mm. yes. Uh, seeing it. Oh, now it has come. Now it has come. Yes, please. Yeah. That's right. fine. Can you go to uh, a slideshow? Sorry for the delay. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. will cover the whole page. All right. That's fine. No, no, no. Don't worry. That's fine. Yes, if you go there, that's great. Yes. Okay. Uh, as I said, you know, sorry for the delay in that, you know, but uh, I'm going to show you the problem that we have got in Iran a little bit by this graphically. Looking at the pictures in here, this is the Ahwaz and this mighty river. Looking at what's happening to that one because of the water shortage. Looking at the Zion the Road has become such a, you know, the dry parched land in that one. Such a beautiful, that was the symbol of the city of Esfahan, half of the world, as we call it, the Paris of the Middle East. And looking at, you know, this is the, you know, many of the palm trees in southern city of Abadan has been destroyed 
because of the desalination. Once there was a many waterways in here. And this is the fate that you can see how people are so desperate for the water situation that it is. Once there was in a mighty river in here going, that was in a such and it's become so dry. And now even you know, to alleviate the problem of the water shortage, they bring the water with the, with the, the, the water tanker to give to the people like that. And you can see that you know, how this water shortage has affected the land. Once you know, it was so beautiful and full of water, but now it is being completely destroyed. And looking at this one there, you know, how the people are sharing the little water that they are receiving. And even the people have used the deep water. The deep water has been used and produces a sinkhole all around. And this sinkhole showing that the misuse of the water, of the deep water that they have been used. But what shall we do about this thing? Now we know the problem. What are we going to do about it? And this the answer to this is the, uh, this project, the hope for Iran, the, um, the new hope, the new horizon for Iran will provide this uh, idea, this concept that it is feasible, it can be done and it is worked out thoroughly. And the outcome that, of that one will be, I will give uh, later on about the advantages that the massive amount of the advantages in this project regarding the economy, job creation, uh, land use, uh, many of these things that I will describe later. But let me just go through the problem of uh, you know, giving the overview of this project. Iran is located in the Central Asian area zone. Iran comprises 0.36% of the world fresh water supply. The average rainfall is, you know, is in Iran, there's 251 millimeter per year, which is less than one third of the global rainfall. Iran received 130 million cubic meters uh, of the water in rainfall, 92% used in uh, outdated agricultural section. And there was only the 2% that can be used for the uh, industrial purposes. Between 1990 to 2002, Iran was critically affected by the drought that caused billions of the uh, losses of the money with the casualty of 800,000 livestock and uh, dried reservoirs. Drought is seriously affected the country's development program and creating widespread political, social, and economic crisis, as we can see it today including vulnerability of the household who can no longer cope with acute water shortage. They face challenges of hunger, unemployment, illness, etc. Hence, if there is no proper management of the, the water crisis, will lead to serious economic and political issues. We are again seeing it in the news today. We can see all around that's what is happening because of the water shortage. Uh, breath supplies, etc. But what are the causes of that one? There are five primary reasons for the present water crisis on a local and a national wide scale. One is lack of a scientific and environmental pro program for proper land use. According to the law, that you know, anyone can drill a well in their land. As a result, more than 200,000 wells have been drilled in Iran and they are still being drilled. And imagining lots of lots of you know wells that have been drilled and all the water, the water that we have we, are, we have got underground is being used. Mismanagement, tests for development and self-sufficiency. They use the water for agricultural system in some of the cities for pistachia or some of these other things that uses lots of water. And as I said, all systems and also politically motivated for some of the industries that are not producing much uh, product. Political decision on water allocation. 
lack of a proper water pricing and the inability of farmers to optimize irrigation, increase in population. One of the biggest problems that we have got in here in terms of a political decision on water allocation, really, that was the development building of many dams which are unnecessary. In Iran, there are plans for production for building of the 700 dams, or more than that actually, which they have already now built over 300 dams, which are unnecessary. And some of them has produced a disaster for environment, like a, a, a Gotwand, uh, the dam Gotwand in Khuzestan that completely destroyed the waterway is over there and salinated all those waterways. So you can see this, this political decision Lack of a proper water pricing, as Ambassador Avivi mentioned, actually, is educating people to use water properly and uh, increasing population. Then in the countryside, people will use, they have got no water, they will migrate. They will migrate to the cities. So the cities they come, they will increase it in population. So there is increase in demand. And there is increase in demand. They can't do that one. and these are all the uh, pr pr five primary reasons, really, for this uh, shortage of water that we can see in Iran. Consequently, the country challenged with severe water problem at both local and nationwide scale, including increasing water demand and scarcity, decreasing groundwater tables, deteriorating water qualities, growing loss of ecosystems, the countries urgently need to implement integrated water resources management to solve this problem. The condition will be more disastrous in the year to come. Water is the most critical resource for agricultural production and food security. By the year 2050, the world will face the impact of a food security, a massive scale of food because of the population explosion to 10 billion. Common drought and harsh environmental condition produces little uh, in the, in food in Iran. At present, Iran significantly depends on imported food commodities. Food security will continue to be one of the most critical issues that will be the policymaker to think about it for many years to come. We need to be prepared to provide food for Iranians, and this project is an answer to this pandemic problem. There are patches of land with fewer salination in desert in Iran, such as Jasmurian Lut, Lut the Dasht -e Kavir, rely on fresh water for agricultural purposes. Because in many of these places, some of the plants can grow actually in there, and they require less salinate, less, uh, they don't require 100% fresh water, and they can use less salinated water. And many of the plants have got a degree of this. They can, uh, they can tolerate the degree of the salination. And I'm sure Ambassador Avivi mentioned about it in, the, uh, in his talk about that they are using in Israel uh, some of that, uh, some of that technology for the, uh, some of degree of the salination of, of water. The proposed project would bring seawater from Persian Gulf via a series of a strategically placed channels and tunnels directed to the areas of desert. Water will be desalinated for agricultural use in those areas and channeled onto the Caspian Sea outlet to control the sea level as well as to control the pollution because the Caspian Sea is one of the most polluted sea in the, in, in the world because of the uh, all of the pollution that are around from the Volga River comes to the Caspian Sea. And unfortunately, the, uh, the biggest, the deepest part is in the Iran uh, section, which all the pollution comes over there. So this project not only helps with the sea level of that, which is drying uh, yearly, but it also tries to overcome the pollution, that, uh, the, that one, uh, for the future generation. The proposed solution to water prices and food supply is an ambitious mega project with multi-dimensional aspects of creating jobs, security for better future, the spread of population, the new social demographic living standard in modern cities, advanced schooling and health, 
encompassing a state-of-the-art uh, engineering will bring prosperity and wealth, affecting Iranian societies, political and socioeconomic for a better future. I will talk about many of these things in my talk later on uh, about the advantages. And the timeline for the proposed project is approximately 20 years, 23 years. And the cost of the project is multi-billion dollar. We emphasize that this project will regenerate its worth in the long run because it can regenerate its own uh, expenses. And this is just to show you graphically where, how this we have worked out the way that this, uh, uh, see this channels and the tunnels are going through the from Persian Gulf to that. And this, in fact, uh, engineering theory is going to talk in detail about the technical aspect of that. I just stopped in here and give the podium to uh, engineer Ziare. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Lahuti. Thank you very, very much for your uh, talk. Uh, so uh, the last uh, presentation, Dr. Uh, Lahuti, please, if you can share your presentation with us on environmental aspects and then uh, wrap up by Mr. Sadiri and we'll go to the question and answer, please. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can, and we can see your presentation. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, although yes, there yes. is a black box there, but it, it's all right. It's it's uh, it's visible. I don't know it's where visible. this black box coming from. Don't worry, don't worry about it. Don't worry. <laughs> Carry on. Carry yeah. on. I'm uh, very thankful to Dr. Mohsini and Dr. Alireza for such a beautiful presentation and showing the generation of energy, because there is a question about that one that I'm going to answer later. And also Dr. Mohsen explaining beautifully the modern agriculture that will help the Iran for, uh, for reviving and many of the aspects uh, of the agricultural system. In this section, I'm talking about the Zist boom or, or uh, ecosystems of the Iran. Plants and animals in the Iranian environment, Iran has a diverse climate and one of the richest biodiversity in the world. In fact, in the world of one French explorer in 1848, when he visited Iran and went to Khorasan, and he saw that you know, many thousands of the birds and other animals, that it was so fascinated that it is called that this is the paradise on earth in Iran. According to countless biologists, Iran is among the top 10 countries globally in terms of the biodiversity. The fact that Iran has desert, mountainous uh, areas such as Algors and Zagros mountains, forest areas and marine ecosystems such as in Caspian Sea, the Persian Gulf and the Sea of Amman, it's uh, provided such a rich environment. According to the latest statistically published by the Environmental Protection Agency of Iran, there are 1,140 species of animals, 530 species of birds, and approximately 650 species of uh, uh, fishes have been identified in Iranian ecosystems. The presence of nearly 6,000 plant species in Iran has made this country one of the wealthiest countries in this area. There are several rare animals and plant species in Iran. They are endangered due to reckless management of these animal species. Wildlife in Iran includes plant and animal and their natural habitats. One of Iran's most famous wildlife member, the last surviving endangered cheetah, also known as the Iranian cheetah, is now found nowhere except in, in the world, except in Iran. Unfortunately, there are many of these species, especially the cheetahs and the very, some of these mountain goats and other gazellas 
are being haunted by the giving permission to foreign hunter coming over there and uses these animals for the game and for the fun just to kill these things you know and that is very unfortunate and uh, they think that you know government should do anything about it but unfortunately they don't do anything about it because they themselves are the one that gives the uh, permission for this and then uses it he get, gets a huge amount of money corruption that's one of the biggest problems that we have got in that Iran lost all extinct Asian lions and Caspian tigers in the early 20th centuries. Iran's wildlife consists of various animal species, includes, including bears, gazelles, wolves, jackals, leopards, and foxes. Other domestic animals include sheep, goats, cows, buffaloes, donkeys, camels, pheasants, partridges, dogs, eagles, and hawks are also native in Iran. If you look at some of this, in fact, there are bears that are traveling from uh, Russian uh, Siberia, si Siberia, they used to do, and they used to come over there in Iran for uh, this uh, migration. They had uh, many pelicans, they used to come and stay in the uh, area of the uh, Rezoye, Lake Rezoye, which is unfortunately is dying. And also there was lots of species of fishes in the Lake Hamun, which are unfortunately dried up and is disappearing. If you look at it now, I'm going to show you some of the most beautiful pictures of the, some of these uh, animal species, which you can see that uh, uh, in here, uh, there are, as you can, that's, you know, you can see this eagle, they call it eagle, golden eagle, in the southern province of Khorasan. We got this, this uh, they call it the golden, the golden, uh, and it is, it is really a million dollar bear that has been hunted and is, is, is getting in its night extinction if we don't do something about it. We got this again, another falcons that we can see. We can see this beautiful gazala which was, you know, in there, they are all they are in the in the, in the, in the near extinction in Iran. This is in fact the mountain goat, which is the symbol of the water in the Achaemenid period in Iran. And there are many bas reliefs. Uh, we can see this uh, beautiful, majestic animal, which is sitting on top of the mountain, and they are all been really that it, it, it is the, it's going to be extinct because of the mismanagement and not paying attention to the ecosystems in Iran. And this uh, morale you, or this big you, this uh, 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 deer that it is in fact you know is is this is, is, is extinct thing. and this is you know a, a leopard in Iran again is extinct species. And there was a few weeks ago, there was a picture of one of these beautiful animals was hunted and was killed unnecessarily. And we got this, you know, the bears in that one in Iran, which is now, is, they are disappearing. And we got this carcass in Iran, they are, uh, they are there. And we got some of these are some of these, uh, uh, this uh, kind of uh, animal that exists in the Kavir uh, Lut in Lut Desert. There are snakes over there, which are in fact, you know, they're in the verge of uh, extinction. There are uh, scorpions, they are in the verge of extinction. There are these uh, black widow uh, spider, a red back also. That is, is you know, very poisonous. It's, 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 it, they are going to die. They are, you know, this uh, spider again that you can see that tarantula in the in the, the Iranian desert, and we can see some of these uh, ants which are in, in in the Iranian desert. Or this is you know, another one that you know, is Khadang, They call that one. And there are foxes. You can see that you know, in the desert of Iran. And the Persian cat in the Lut Mountains, 
and this another uh, this is the specific type of a cat which is belong to the Baluchistan area of Iran and we can see this uh, uh, this uh, this Jorde uh, Iradi show Bufta again it is in uh, Baluchistan area and we can see this uh, use plank irony which is exactly as a matter of fact it is really a, a, a heritage it's a national heritage national symbol but unfortunately they are being hunted and they are on the verge of an extinction on that one and this is one of the last what they call it the tiger of the Mazandaran which he in fact has been you know, been extinct so the aim of our project is really in, to help and to preserve the ecosystem of Iran. And we are able to do that by the knowledge that we have got, by the experiences that we have got. Remembering that there are many, many scientists and uh, there are many people there in Iran in many universities that can be used uh, the knowledge that exists over there. And I got to tell you that many of the knowledge that I'm talking about is already exists in Iran, in agricultural department from 19, in Nisale, yes, in 1939, I think it's around 1960s. Yes, in the, around 1960s, all many of these sorts of things has been classified, has been in, uh, uh, collected, in Ministry of Agriculture in Iran, many of the knowledge it is available and that can be used for helping these ecosystems of Iran, because there are many waterways that have been destroyed, and many of the, uh, as I said, many of the animals have been destroyed, many of the forest has been destroyed, lakes, waters, uh, rivers have been destroyed. Aim of our project is to revive many of these still. Aim of our project is to revive the Harmon Lake, to revive those thousands of six thousand fishes that have disappeared. Is, is sorry, six thousand fishes. Uh, I'm not talking about six thousand plants. I meant that one, but there are fishes which have disappeared in the Harmon River, and the same with many of the other forests uh, in the mountain area. So this project has got a very advantages for the ecosystem. It's not going to destroy ecosystems. I am wondering why people are saying a destruction of ecosystem. No, we are helping the ecosystem, not destroying it. How can we destroy something which is already destroyed by the present regime? But we are going to help and we have got the knowledge. We have a technology. Dr. Mostly talked about it by engineering. That is where the key issues in future. We have the techniques of the bioengineering, the, 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 the uh, CRISPR system that we can use actually to change the genetics of the thing for the better. So no, our aim, this project aim is to help the ecosystem which has already been destroyed and bring the water to the many areas of Iran, especially in the southern, which, we has, which I showed, it will go in the western part of Iran, and to help with the environment, with the reduction of the pollution, reduction of the pollution, economy. Let me in this, uh, you know, going through the advantages of this uh, project. And I, I will show you, the, I will share you with you, and I hope you will agree with me with this. Let's just look at that for you know, In fact, the advantages. One of them is, in fact, is production and supply of agricultural food. Dr. Mosley talked beautifully about this thing. I'm just highlighting it. One is the food production of the country to self-sufficiency and export. There is no need to import food and medicine. That's a strategic effect prevent food shortages for future generation in the next 30 years. Food export after the end of a project a strategic effect. Iran's participation in solving the world food shortages in the next 
uh, the next uh, decade or so. And this is the strategic one. These are the demands Ziori talked about, Dr. Mosley talked about, uh, in the basis of future and especially the forecast of the food shortage by the United Nations that you know, has been you know, said uh, by the year 2050, right, that we need a lot of food. And we are able to provide that as we should shown by Dr. Amanda Ziari, as the waterway goes, the canal goes around and the water comes to the desert and then the desalination of the desert, regeneration of the land, agricultural land, build up of the cities, roads, many of the new effect, the socioeconomic effect on that one. These are the very important part of the, this project. Looking at the economic effect of that one, increasing the country's per capita income, strengthening the country's indigenous and traditional economy, attracting capital in Iran, establish ancillary industries and industrial chemical and agricultural factories, strengthening Iran's structure factories and manufacturing modern agricultural machinery, using sea salt after desalinating salt water to produce chemical, as was shown on the table by Mahanda Ziari, we are able to extract many of those minerals and reuse them again, increasing export and non-oil income, increasing livestock and livestock production and the dairy production to become like a Holland, as was mentioned by Mahanda Ziari. Aquaculture and caviar breeding, that was a tradition in Iran, which has been disappeared, or in fact, maybe only used for the private purposes, attracting tourists and developing the tourism industry. One of the things that we have had, that this was one of the main industries we had before the tourists coming. I was, even I was over there in Iran, in Shiraz, I was always saying the tourists coming, going to the Persopolis, going to the uh, Rustam, or many of these other places that we had, developing tourist and hotel spaces, developing recreational sport and water sports spaces, the development of the cultural spaces, revival of the trade and historical roots of Iran. What I'm talking about when we are talking about the roots is that the road that comes from north to the south. As this project develops for development for the canals, you need the road to bring the material. After the, this, the project finished, the same road can collect the Iran to the north and to the south. You see, this is very important for economy and for transportation. Transformation of the means of transportation for the construction of the canal tunnels into the national highway. Revolving, resolving political problems of the politician in the future for food shortages. It's a, this is also, in fact, the politician begin to think to develop the program for future uh, to safeguard the supply of the food for people for Iran and other places and to give them ideas in that one. And this is really the essence of the project, of safeguarding, helping the people, they deserve it. If you're looking at you know, the social impact of this project, creating hope in the society and looking to the future, look at what's happening now. Have they got a hope? Creating an environment for reconstructing a wounded Iranian identity and strengthening community morality, creating 2 million jobs at the start of the project, creating between 20 to 30 million direct and indirect jobs after completion of the project, creating jobs in technology and the new technology such as modern agriculture and water treatment. That uh, Ambassador Avivi talked about treat water treatment that Israel uses 85% of that one is, uh, for the water treatment. That's what we are aiming, and that's what will happen if we are uh, being, uh, when we are in Iran. Establishing and encouraging the community to use clean energy, creating jobs and hopes in Sistan and Baluchistan province, and preventing 
many of the separatist movement that there are you know, people that talk, talk about those sort of things. Creating jobs in Kerman, homos gone, farce, and cities close to this project. People's relocation and settlement across the country in newly established modern agricultural cities. As you can see now, there are lots of people living in uh, outside the uh, big cities. And in big cities, there are this uh, population explosion over there. If we build the modern cities, it's easier for the young couple, for the young people to move from those uh, uh, around the big cities and to move to these new cities. And this will reduce the pressure on the big cities. Elimination of marginalization and reduction of marginalized people in the, in the, in the country from the, around the big cities. Helping to reduce the population of the country's big cities. Development of a different environment for living and working. Social interaction, better city, better road, better environment. Development of various scientific resources, educational and study opportunities and scientific achievement. That is exactly what other countries are doing. Why cannot we do it in Iran? Huh? Preventing sectionist incitement across the world uh, and increasing attachment, uh, 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 like in the time Iraq attacked Iran. Uh, and, you know, so we have to be very careful about that sort of thing and make sure that nothing happens in future. Environmental effect on that one, creating suitable condition for a healthy environment, increasing the country's groundwater reserve and maintaining them for future generations, helping clean and eliminating air pollution in metropolitan area. Looking at what happening, the pollution in Iran is killing people because of those uh, um, the, the dust particles. Uh, that they are coming either from Iraq or from other places, the dust particle, which is in Iran, uh, help, killing people, helping clean and eliminate air pollution in metropolitan area, increasing rainfall throughout the country and solving water shortage, creating moisture and facilitating desert for growth of plant and animal ecosystems. We have got the means, we have got the technology. There are technologies available for creating cloud and to pre creating water. Helping to preserve Lake Harmon, helping to preserve water levels of Caspian Sea, restoration and dredging of the aqueducts in the region. Many of the aqueducts, many of the aqueducts that Dr. Ziyamandi Ziori talked about, they have been blocked. They have been destroyed because of lack of a mismanagement, not paying attention to these vital uh, areas that we inherited from our fathers. You know, these aqueducts of Iran, which are most famous of them, some of them are in the UNESCO's uh, uh, inheritance uh, for Iran. And they are all blocked. So we are able to do that one, restoration, reconstruction, development of green space, historical forests, and environment for growth and protection of the wildlife. Many of the forests have been destroyed. So this project can help with the uh, revival of that. UNESCO says about this uh, uh, sustainable development goals, and we have done that. We, this project, in fact, covers all of these things. Looking at that one, no power, no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well being, quality of education, gender equality. In fact, uh, uh, sorry, clean water as, and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, detect decent work, uh, economic growth, industry, innovation, and infrastructure, reduced inequalities, sustainable uh, cities and, and communities, responsible, responsible 
consumption and production, climate action, life below water, life on land, peace, justice, and a strong institution, partnership for the, for the gold, sustainable develop, developmental goals that was you know, the, published by the UNESCO. And this project answers all of these uh, goals of that one. In here, I stopped uh, the project uh, and uh, I'm very grateful to everybody that uh, they presented. And uh, I give the podium to Janab uh, Nader Sadiqi. Thank for you. concluding remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Lahuti. Thank you for a thorough, uh, you know, uh, good uh, overview of everything that this project can bring about uh, itself.